so in our uh, first lecture we discussed the the role of supply chain the importance of supply chain and uh, how the supply chain has uh, become such a very important function for modern day business now we will start discussion of this lecture with evolution of supply chain management in last 100 years if uh, we start the discussion of evolution the first very important case or the first important revolution which is uh, in the beginning of uh, 20th century around 1910 and 1920 that time and uh, this is characterized by the ford supply chain the ford motor company is pioneered in integrated the entire supply chain right from birth to death of the car ford supply chain is known to be one of the most efficient supply chains on one side ford used to have its own iron ores and on the other side they used to distribute the cars finished car on the market so on one side they were having the mining business they were used to process the iron ore to get the steel use that steel in making the car and then distribute the car and they efficiented that system so well that it is documented that ford used to deliver a car from mine to the retailer in just 81 hours and uh, therefore ford example is one of the most pioneered example in the case of efficient supply chain that in 81 hours Ford can deliver and uh, it was a very well saying at that time that as long as a car is of black color it can be delivered by Ford and as long as it is a T model it can be delivered by Ford. So T and black these are the symbols of efficient supply chains then the second important uh, phase of uh, the development of supply chain is from japan when toyota created a different type of model in the model of ford right from the beginning right from the beginning where you have iron ore mining to customer all the activities which are required in making the car are owned by ford company but nowadays in this japanese revolution which came around 1950s and 1960s after second world war now what they did Toyota developed a pool of vendors and these pool of vendors they used to supply different types of products, components, assemblies, sub assemblies to Toyota and then Toyota used to distribute these finished cars to the customers. So, instead of doing all things on its own, Toyota started developing the capabilities of the vendors and actually this is a model which nowadays most of the companies follow. Now it is very rare, now it is very rare though the example of Ford is always known, is always popular for its very high level of efficiency but and uh, there are certain limitations also with this Ford model that uh, it was almost inflexible because uh, you are controlling everything in your supply chain. So, it is very difficult to change the product and therefore only black color only T model became the synonyms of Ford supply chain. On the other hand 
you have a pool of vendors with their own expertise and now the Toyota become more responsive to understand the customer's requirement. So, this Ford model which was totally inflexible and with this Toyota model which came around uh, 50 years after this initial uh, development of supply chain concept. Uh, so, we started moving from this inflexible model to a bit of flexibility in the supply chain. So, some flexibility is started coming in the supply chain from Ford to Toyota and uh, now in Toyota you have many owners, you have many owners of the supply chain. So, many vendors are there and uh, all of them share some part of ownership in the entire supply chain. And then very recently you can say almost at the end of 20th century or around beginning of 21st century at that time the third revolution which is more IT driven revolution in the supply chain. This IT driven revolution is the Dell supply chain and that is also very interesting type of uh, uh, development in the supply chain and this development helps us in understanding the supply chain in present context that what is happening in the present scenario in the supply chain. Now, Dell powered on the advantage of information technology. So, Dell used to get information from the customer and uh, Dell used to pass this information to its various vendors. These vendors may be located at different locations. These vendors provide different components to Dell. So, a customer normally we all know the capability of Dell, Dell was known to provide the customized products to its customer and uh, we were having the opportunity to design our machine, design our laptop, design our computer on the Dell's website and uh, Dell used to collect this information from the customer and depending upon whatever specification, whatever configuration a customer has ordered, this information was passed to different vendors. Now, all these vendors, they supply their components to Dell and then Dell used to assemble them in a single packet, so that that packet will go to the customer. So, now this is the leveraging the power of information technology for the better customer satisfaction, so that customer get, get the unique product which he or she is requiring. But over a period of time, Dell realized that uh, all the customers, all the normal customers like me, like you, we are giving almost similar kind of configurations for our requirements and then uh, till 2006, Dell was giving only its product through online ordering. But when Dell realized that now customers are not so particular, customers are not so unique with respect to their requirements. So, from 2006 onwards, Dell changed its model of supply chain and after that Dell's products are also available through retailers, through other conventional supply chains because earlier time we for the sake of uniqueness of our orders were ready to wait for 10 days, 15 days from the Dell's website. But when we are not having so unique requirements, so why will I wait? And this question came in the minds of uh, officers of Dell company and therefore, 
they took a very drastic decision of changing the supply chain of Dell and uh, 2006 onwards Dell changed its supply chain. But nevertheless, Dell became a very interesting case in the modern supply chain where we can see that uh, how you can integrate various vendors and your customers just with the power of your information technology. So, these are three important changes which has happened in last 100 years and uh, the model of Dell, this model of Dell which is based on information technology power, this is actually the starting point of supply chain analytics where we are using real time data where we started using information for the success of our supply chain. In these two cases, the role of information was there, but it was not up to the extent at which Dell started exploiting the use of information for the success of its organization. So, the evolution of supply chain tells us that uh, what are the important changes which has taken place in last 100 years and now the current model of uh, Dell supply chain is uh, based on that information technology, the real time data analysis and uh, that will become the basis of our uh, supply chain analytics course. So, now uh, once we have understood this uh, development of supply chain in last 100 years, uh, so let us uh, quickly review the objective of the supply chain and uh, the objective of supply chain is uh, the management of flows between and among supply chain to maximize total supply chain profitability. So, I again and again always request you that this total word is very, very important for the success of supply chain. We never talk of uh, individual stages, we never talk of individual stages, we always talk of uh, totality and uh, therefore, uh, all the decisions are of uh, totality nature. Uh, before we go into the supply chain analytics, let us see what are the specific challenges of current supply chain which uh, we all see and uh, these challenges will give us some kind of appreciation that uh, what is the requirement of supply chain analytics. Why are we making this simple thing so complicated and uh, therefore, uh, this particular slide will help us to understand some of the challenges. Uh, this list may not be very exhaustive because uh, depending upon the type of supply chain you encounter depending upon a particular market, depending upon a particular type of product category, the challenges may be many more. But uh, some generic challenges considering the current business environment I highlighted here and these are first is lack of synchronization between planning and execution. We do not have what we plan and what we execute. So, there is always a difference between that. So, we if uh, whatever we are planning and we are not able to execute that, so the objectives of supply chain which we have set for ourselves will not be achieved. So, therefore, uh, uh, this is the first important issue related to success of supply chain that we lack the synchronization between planning and execution. The second important challenge is lack of real time data visibility and uh, the supply chain analytics type of interventions will help us in improving this challenge of uh, real time data visibility with no common view across all businesses and channels. In fact, different persons in the supply chain, if we leave this Dell model, if you have uh, various intermediaries in your supply chain, they all will have different sources of data collection and maybe there will not be consistency in the data collected by different intermediaries. So, there is no common view and when you have lack of consistency in the data or information available with the different channel partners 
obviously lot of problems are going to happen. Then irregular reviews of safety stock levels causing frequent stock outs and excess inventory. As a customer when I visit a retailer I always like to have whatever product I want it should be available readily in the stock with that retailer. But because of poor safety stock levels, because of poor safety stock levels, it is quite possible that out of 10 times I visit a retailer only 5 times that product is available. So, very high stock outs of that product and if it is very high stock out like I explained, my customer satisfaction will go down. And it is also possible a product which is not in demand so much and you are keeping the inventory of that product. And if it is happening that way, the product is not in demand and you are keeping the inventory. So, it is unnecessarily going to increase the cost of your supply chain and that will pull down the profitability of your supply chain. So, it is very important that you should have a very proper review of your safety stocks and uh, in supply chain, in supply chain we talk of a term which is uh, very very interesting and lot of our discussion in the coming classes will be based on that term and this is known as bull whip effect where because of improper reviews because of improper reviews you keep on collecting excess inventory at each stage of supply chain and therefore dead inventory in your entire supply chain increases and creates a total failure of your supply chain management bull whip effect is a big big threat to the profitability of the supply chain. So, whenever we talk of supply chain immediately we need to find a good solution an efficient solution for the problems like bull whip effect. So, this is a very serious challenge and uh, certainly the advantage of data analytics can help us in minimizing the issues of frequent stock outs or excess inventory. Then another important issue, another important challenge which is there in the supply chain and that is the need of the hour, lack of flexibility in the network. Our supply chains are not very flexible and this case we have already discussed just now with the example of this Ford supply chain which was totally inflexible only known for two things T car and black cars. But nowadays we all know that you cannot fulfill the demand of a customer just by providing only one color and one model. You need to provide large number of colors and you need to provide large variants also. So, you need more flexibility and this flexibility is required with respect to variety, this flexibility is required with respect to quantities and therefore, we need flexible supply chains, but right now we have very limited flexibility in our supply chains and uh, therefore, it is uh, the data analytics activities which may help us in improving our flexibility aspect of the supply chain. And, uh, this will certainly be a very very important area and uh, we will like to deliberate more on related to flexibility aspects of supply chain in our uh, future classes, future lectures. Then another important challenge of uh, supply chain is price volatility and difficulty in de-risking. Lot of papers you can find in the area of supply chain risk management. And uh, you have lot of threats for the proper supply chain management. And uh, 
we also discussed just now that uh, there is a issue between planning and execution. So, lot of academic discussions are going on with respect to de-risking of supply chain that how you minimize the risk in your supply chain. But because of uh, globalization, because of uh, lot of exchange issues, because of uh, price wars between the competitors and all these things are posing regular challenges to the supply chain and uh, probably we need more futuristic decision making where data analytics will come very handy for us that how to make that futuristic decision and uh, that will probably help us in de-risking our supply chains. So, this is also a very important area where a uh, lot of uh, things are to be done. Then another challenge which uh, supply chains are facing currently that is related to production line imbalance and suboptimal best sizing which creates asset under utilization. Because of uh, for the sake of flexibility you can say for the sake of uh, doing better customer service, for the sake of uh, better customer satisfaction, for all these things we are doing lot of things which are resulting in under utilization of assets. So, actually we need to have a very important trade off between economies of scale, asset utilization, line balancing and customer satisfaction, flexibility, service label because these two things are some kind of trade off. If you go for one, you have to sacrifice other. If you want to achieve higher asset utilization and at the same time you are looking for flexibility, then you need to do some kind of trade off. It is very difficult to achieve both these things simultaneously, but the current requirement says that you need to achieve flexibility also, you need to have a higher asset utilization also. This will help you in reducing the cost and this will help you in better customer satisfaction. So, we need a quantifiable trade off between these two varying aspect. So, these are the challenges which are there in front of us and we will like to solve these challenges with the help of supply chain analytics. So, let us see what is this all about supply chain analytics. So, supply chain analytics as we discussed in the first lecture is all about integrating the data analytics into the supply chain management and the supply chain analytics aims to improve operational efficiency and effectiveness by enabling data driven decisions at all three levels that are strategic level, operational level and tactical level. So, at all three levels of decision making in the organization, strategic, tactical and operational level, we want to take data into consideration and on the basis of this data which is uh, available with us, we will like to take efficient and effective decisions. So, now the science is coming more into play for the development of uh, supply chain decisions. Many a times our decisions may not be rational, many a times decisions are based on lot of qualitative factors, but the supply chain analytics is one area which try to capture even the qualitative data also or qualitative data also it is not only the numerical data which is important here qualitative data 
can also be very useful in taking the decision. But the data at all the level strategic, operational and tactical level. So, decisions if are taken with the help of proper background data available to us, then it is expected that those decisions will help us in a better efficient and effective supply chain. So, this is how we can understand the meaning of supply chain analytics and we will see the uh, use of certain algorithms, we will see the uses of some of the modeling techniques for making the decisions at all these three different levels of uh, supply chain. Now, it also encompasses the complete value chain. The complete value chain which uh, we will see in the next slides started from the sourcing and up to the logistics including the manufacturing, including the distribution and uh, all the aspects. So, the supply chain analytics is not only limited to a particular area of the supply chain, it takes care of your entire value chain right from the sourcing of raw material or sourcing of components or sub assemblies to the logistics and distribution of products through the customer's hand. So, uh, just to give you an idea of uh, uh, supply chain uh, value. So, this is the value uh, which I am talking that right from the development of new product to the services. All these functions uh, right of uh, new product which is based on the information provided by the customer. So, the role of data comes into picture here that uh, what type of information, what type of data is being provided by the customer and whether the new product fulfills those aspects of the requirement. Then marketing and sales which are very, very important to capture that data from the customer because if uh, marketing and sales people are unable to capture the right data of the customer, it is very difficult to develop new product as per their requirements. Then operation people are responsible to add the value, to add the incremental value into the components so that product is produced as per the specification. So, they are also based on the uh, background data available with them. The distribution and services, where the customer is, where the customer is, we need at, at what time customer requires that product, it is also very, very important that uh, the place and the timing. So, data related to place and timing that will help us to make efficient and effective decisions with respect to distribution. At what stage of product consumption the services will be required. So, data related to product uses, how the customer is using the product and it is very interesting and we all know ourselves that many a times we use products in variety of innovative ways and as a service guy, I need to know that what are the different ways in which a product can be used. Interestingly, when I do a class on innovations management, we normally ask that what are the different innovative uses of toothbrush. Now, toothbrush we all know we use it for cleaning the teeth, but when we ask this question in a class of innovation management, you can find variety of innovative uses of toothbrush, maybe as wild as cleaning the floors, as wild as for making the paintings. So, just to give you an example that a service guy must have all that data that in how many conditions, uh, in what type of uh, uh, situations my product can be used and accordingly that data will help me to take efficient and effective decisions with respect to my service requirement. So, all these decisions which are there at the different stages of value chain, if all these decisions are taken with the help of data, these decisions will be very efficient and effective and with the help of supply chain analytics, we will try to take decisions 
at all these stages which will make the purpose of supply chain analytics in line with the supply chain management which is in line with the business strategy of the organization and that is in line with the overall objective of the organization. So, in this lecture we discussed the evolution of supply chain management and the key challenges which our supply chains of the modern day are facing and then we also discuss that how data analytics can help us in solving these challenges and uh, what is the purpose of data analytics and uh, what is the meaning of supply chain analytics and uh, objectives of supply chain analytics. So, now in next class we will discuss the various strategic aspect of the supply chain management and which will give us uh, food for thought for our further classes that how these strategic issues can be handled with the help of available data. Thank you very much.